Okay, well, welcome everyone this evening, and we're so excited to have you join us on this webinar on making the most of a college website. For so many high school students, uh, navigating a college website can be challenging, and yet it's chock full with resources. Um, this evening, we, um, we're we lucky to have joining us Rick Clark. Rick is the Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Georgia Institute of Technology. Um, uh, Rick's been at Georgia Tech for um, 16 years. And um, when I toured uh, Georgia Tech with our daughter years and years ago, I remember him talking about his personal commitment to the Georgia Tech um, values around <clears throat> progress and service. Uh, Rick and his team have an active blog and are really, really strongly committed to providing students and parents with resources to, to demystify the undergraduate admissions um, process. So Rick, thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely. Now, a couple of um, context points for um, college websites and why they're so important to um, high school students and their families. Um, in surveys, 75% of students point to the college's website as the most helpful resource. And then on a scale of one to five, they rated a four as the most influential resource. Um, now this year, more than ever, there are students who will be applying and even considering um, accepting admissions to colleges that they've never visited. And so the college website can be a crucial and even in some cases, a central decision-making tool for students. Now, a couple of comments before we dive into the body of this evening's webinar. We'll be recording this webinar and sharing it with all attendees, as well as sharing the resources that Rick and I mentioned. And as we go through this evening's webinar, if you end up having questions, please just let us know in the question box and my colleague Jillian will make sure we try to address those. Now, with that as context, COVID has made a college website, as I mentioned a moment ago, even more important. You see these statistics from a June survey. And a college's website can be a hub, not just a traditional website, but the virtual engagement opportunities like campus tours, virtual Q&A sessions, one-on-one -on -one meetings. These are inputs that students who haven't been able to visit a college increasingly look to as a key input as they evaluate schools in their college list and as they look to making final decisions ultimately about what schools to accept admissions to. Now with that as context, in a couple of minutes, Rick will be taking us through a walkthrough of both the Georgia Tech site and the Agnes Scott site, but at a high level, students and parents can look to a college's website for a whole host of resources. Obviously, uh, sometimes you see this as the major navigation of a college's website. There's deep information about student life, detailed academic uh, information about the academics, both the academic departments, but also the programs and even the majors that a college or university offers. Increasingly, schools are building out the career section of their website, and that's a, a useful space both for prospective students and obviously undergraduate and graduate students themselves. Alumni sections, admission sections, which students oftentimes as they enter their senior year become increasingly focused on. But I'd encourage students and parents to make sure they're aware of the fact that schools increasingly offer a rich array of resources for first-gen students, and they offer information about the learning support or tutoring services that a college or university might offer. Now, with that as context, a couple of observations before Rick jumps in to, um, to talk a little bit about the two sites. Obviously, students are well served by making sure they have a criteria for a college before they dive into research. It's a little bit like going to Amazon's website and then wondering what should I buy. There are so many options there, but if a student can spend time considering her criteria, 
it will make their time on that website even more valuable. Now, there are a couple of resources that students may consider as they develop their criteria. These are the Coursava criteria cards available both online and offline that many students and college counselors find valuable as a resource. Um, many students and counselors are familiar with Steve's, Steve Antonoff's classic book called The College Finder, and it offers a deeper sense of the sort of academic and cultural aspect that a student may focus on as she considers where to look on a college's website. And then here at College Match Point, we use an online criteria survey. Students typically spend about 35 to 45 minutes reflecting on what they want on a college and then sharing this with their counselor so that we have a better sense of what schools they may want to consider, but even more importantly, how they'll evaluate schools. Now, one of the resources that we found valuable for students before they research a college is we utilize a guide. Um, our students use the College Planner Pro website for all their um, college counseling needs. We have a guide. Um, honestly, we focus on the Georgia Tech um, profiles in College Planner Pro, Pro, which include the Fisk Guide profile and popularly this year, the Campus Reel videos. Um, it doesn't come close to a college tour, but students who are unable to tour Georgia Tech or other schools can certainly dive into College Planner Pro or other counseling platforms to begin to evaluate schools before they dive into looking at a website. With that as context, I'm going to switch screen sharing and give it to Rick so that um, he can jump in and walk through the Georgia Tech site and the Agnes Scott site. Uh, Rick, it's all yours. All right, appreciate that. Um, I guess as far as, um, I guess getting started, one question, Bob, with the, um, with slides, can I access those real quickly or no? The slides uh, you on sure it. can, would you like me to uh, pop the screen share back on for a minute? Yeah, if you don't mind, let's go through just a couple quickly and then we'll go to the, go to the site, if that's all right. Here we go. All right, perfect, thank you. So um, yeah, real quickly, as far as, and yeah, I guess I can just sort of come back to these in a second. Um, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, looking forward to taking any questions at the end. Hopefully it can be a resource for you um, uh, as we go through. Now, what do I need to do to advance this slide? There we go, I'll be your man white, Rick. Just tell me next slide. Perfect. Okay, great. Well, I mean, and you referenced this a little bit, but I think that before you, really go to sites. Uh, I mean, honestly, I feel like one of the best things to do is start to ask big questions. Um, a lot of families, a lot of school communities, um, a lot of people that are kind of talking about college admission, I think walk before they crawl uh, and start thinking where a lot instead of starting with some of the really basic questions. Uh, so, you know, why am I even looking at college to begin with? And maybe you have a sense of that, but if you do, you're a way ahead of most people, I think, uh, who fail to write that down or, you know, voice record that or in some way process why. Uh, a lot of students, it's just this foregone conclusion. It's what everybody's talked about for a long time. And, you know, it's just an expectation. Um, so, you know, as a good student and you know, teachers talk about that or coaches or other adults in your life talk about college for you. So I guess one of the biggest things I would say is whether it be a parent, an adult in the you know, student's life or the student themselves, actually taking some time to write down why. Um, and then thinking too about, you know, the type of environments that you thrive in. Um, you know, if you are somebody who really enjoys discussion wants to be in a smaller environment both in terms of where like college town or you're okay in a big city uh, but also classroom environment so um, maybe fine in a big city but you don't want to be in classrooms of 300 uh, you know those are those are good helpful starting points 
Um, I think also just this idea of, you know, what am I trying to accomplish? And I saw that on some of your, um, some of your forms there. So what are your big goals? Um, and then the type of people that bring out your best. I think these are just some very basic questions that students should be asking because then when you land on these college websites, you know what you're looking for. Um, I have a friend and a colleague who a lot of times will say it's good to just write down the column uh, of a one page piece of paper, just write needs and wants. Um, you know, what are the things you really need in a college? What are the things you want in a college? And figuring out maybe sometimes those move between columns, uh, but that's a helpful place to start. This website, um, happy to have anybody sh uh, you know, check that out if you'd like. In fact, when we go to the site later, you're welcome to check it out. But we tried to walk people through this. It's a fillable PDF and it's kind of like a mind mapping exercise um, for any student really, uh, whether you be a freshman in high school or a senior, to think a little bit about where um, last, not where first. And so I think this idea of moving down the, the road a little bit um, and starting out and having it be a journey rather than a foregone conclusion is, is wise. Um, and that's going to pay off dividends um, down the road too. You know, if you, if you ask these kind of questions and you go through this process, it could lead you to writing a much better essay about, you know, because most schools have this question, why us, right? Why Tulane? Why Georgia Tech? Why whatever school it might be? Uh, if you've really thought about that, your answer is going to be so much better. Um, and then I would think, you know, you could talk to almost anybody who's been to college and they're going to describe a cold November night where they're in their first year and they're seriously questioning whether or not they made the right choice. Um, and for people who never really ask these questions, I think that's a very, very cold, lonely night when they're scrolling through Instagram and all their friends look happy at other schools and they're questioning whether or not they made the right choice. Uh, but if you had your whys and if you went through this process and asked big questions, then you'll be able to come back to it. So I say that not just for now, but honestly, all the way through college, it's, it's a touchstone. If you can come back to, you no, know, I, I, it is still cold and it is still dark and I don't feel like maybe, you know, things are perfect right now, but I know why I'm here. That's going to give you a whole lot of peace and solace to carry you. Any first year student has that night. So here are some of the things that we're going to look for on these pages, but I just wanted to kind of say them before we go find them a little bit. Um, you know, indicating your interest. So when you do your research and when you go to these websites, if you are finding the things that you were looking for and you're feeling like these places are matching up, don't just hit and run, right? Don't just come and leave. And we say this when you come to college campuses too. Even if you've grown up going to that college campus, been on it a million times, you still need to check that box by going to an information session, by doing a campus tour. Right now we're living obviously in a very virtual world. And so those are inquiry forms online or those are virtual visits. Uh, even if you feel like you know the school very well, go ahead and do that. Um, not only is it gonna get you on a mailing list, it's gonna get you more, more information, it'll get you invited to programs. But then also for some schools, this idea of demonstrating uh, your interest uh, is, is gonna be of value. Um, it's going to connect you with that school as you move through the process. And we spend lots of time constructing communication flows based on how students behave online, which may sound moderately disturbing, a little big brotherish, but um, there's value to that because it helps you get more specific information. One, right. one, um, one comment yeah. to jump in here before we go to the next slide is that Rick talked before that um, as a freshman or a sophomore visiting a site, you might just be building the base of your understanding of the site. Um, as juniors and seniors, in many cases, you'll be writing an essay to that school about why you want to apply. And so your review of the site, that college is going to ask you to demonstrate knowledge of their school, not simply interest, hey, I'd like to go to Georgia Tech, but a specific area of knowledge about why Georgia Tech is such a great fit. So, we oftentimes say to students, it's not just about demonstrating interest, it's about demonstrating knowledge. Yeah, I mean, a good, a very specific example of that is for a while, we had that why 
essay that a lot of schools have it's why us right um we've we've on another layer down on that to why this major why are you applying for the major you are at georgia tech so to your point it's not just knowledge of the place it's knowledge beyond that of why this major at this place um, so for instance that's different right biomedical engineering at georgia tech is not biomedical engineering at johns hopkins uh, and so those are the those are to your point i mean dead on the other thing i would say is don't believe so much of what people like me say um, you know we're paid to help you drink the kool-aid Poor guides same thing um, they may not be paid to do it but they're given t-shirt and pizzas and stuff like that so I would say that admissions should be taken with a grain of salt it's always going to be the glossy shiny everything's perfect kids walk around holding hands not during COVID but otherwise, um, you know, and as this, uh, it's not my picture here, but this picture on the side, you can see, you know, a couple of kids of different ethnicities lounging in the, in the lawn there, enjoying a blissful day. That's an admission picture. Uh, your job is to go beyond admission and really try to find this more organic sense of culture, right? The other thing I would say is even as we poke around these sites today, no one opinion is gospel truth. So whether your brother said it, an alum said it, a professor says it, your job is to ask as many questions and as many of the same questions to lots of different people. And if you hear all those people saying some of the same things, that's truth. You hear one person say it, that's just an opinion. So um, that's your job is to kind of research and, and go beyond. The other thing, and we won't do this necessarily today, I don't think, might on Agnes Scott's site, is alumni magazines and school newspapers. You usually don't find this off of admission websites. They should be. Um, but, you know, that is something you can definitely Google for, and maybe we'll do that if we have time. Uh, but school newspapers are great. Now, kids are snarky, and they're going to complain about a bunch of stuff. Uh, you got to just, again, take that in, though, as culture, right, and try to think, are these my people? Is this the type of stuff that I am also snarky about? Uh, then maybe you, maybe you resonate there. So going beyond thinking about admission as this hub of the wheel. All right, um, so we can go to the next slide. I think this is where I, um, oh yeah, last thing, and we will see this a little bit, is often when I talk to parents, they are paranoid about social media. They think that we, admission folks or financial aid people, are delving into their son or daughters or their, you know, the, the student that they're advising. We're going to go looking at their Instagram. We're going to go looking at their Snapchat. We're going to go looking at their Twitter page. Um, and I'd just like to say I'm proud to tell you I don't do that. I don't go looking at 17-year-olds' uh, social media. So I feel really good about being able to tell you that. Um, I would say that we basically would want you to use social media for good. Uh, in other words, you can get some great content about us from Twitter, from Instagram, from the YouTube uh, of these schools. Again, admission is going to give you perfect, right? So you, that's fine. Look a little perfect. But also, if you're interested in studying, you know, biology, Go oh, see if you can find the biology page, right? Or the College of Sciences page. Um, if you want to play club rugby, go see if you can find the rugby page because they are not, they don't even know you're there. They're not talking to you. Whereas we are always talking to you, meaning we're trying to make it look really good, right? Um, so what I want you to do is springboard off and that's where you get a real sense of face and, and the true culture of the place. So with that said, Let's see what we can find. Um, I can now take over. So uh, let's see, if I pull this up, can you see my screen? Uh, you are gonna wanna hit the share screen in the bottom right there. Can you uh, see that, Rick? Uh, let's see. Yep, I got it. All right, so let me know if you have me now. We are looking at a document. There we go, perfect. Okay, perfect. So this is the Georgia Tech admission page. Um, and just a couple quick things that I would, I would point to. Uh, one of those is gonna be this visit site um, and then figuring out who you are, right? 
Um, if you are a high school student, then you're going to be, we are talking about you as a first year student, right? Part of this is a little bit, I mean, I can already start to pick apart our site and all the problems with it. Maybe we should be saying, you know, and some schools will, are you a high school student? Uh, and, and they will sometimes have it broken out that way. High school students, right? Um, but if you see freshman or first year, they are also talking to you. So this is a bit of a communication breakdown. Um, and I always call this our bad, your problem, right? So it's, it's our fault, but you have to deal with it. So this is some of, of the way that we talk. Um, so first year students, right? I want to um, learn a little bit more about what's going on here. Uh, this is how I can attend a first year session. Um, you can see that we present these and this is, you know, again, during COVID time. One of the best things I would tell you is that COVID has actually forced colleges to get a lot more creative and put a lot better information online. So I know a lot of people, you know, juniors in high school, seniors in high school feel, and I would say somewhat rightly so, that you're kind of getting screwed in some ways, right? You can't go maybe visit some of these places. You can't play tennis. Uh, School is virtual. I mean, that does kind of suck, and I'm not going to try to sugarcoat that in any way. But as far as the college admission experience is concerned, you have better information than students did four months ago. You can get more information, see more faces, hear more voices, get more connected more quickly, and do better research than kids could for just four months ago, let alone last year, right? So in that regard, you are in fact better off. Stuff like this didn't exist and frankly it should have and we weren't doing it. And, and there are some colleges, but very few that don't feel extremely convicted about what they should have been doing that they were not and now are. But you don't need to worry about that. You need to just be kind of thankful that this is where we are. Georgia Tech, as you can see, is, is not just trying to, um, you know, connect you with our own admissions staff, um, but then there's also opportunities to, to hear from students um, as well. And you can see that um, if you happen to, you know, live in a place where you want to go um, for a school, and you feel comfortable doing that. Of course, these places are not physically cut off and closed. Um, it's not the ideal time to go visit a bunch of places, but you will also find self-guided tours. So if you're seeing that um, with a lot of these places not hosting information sessions and tours, you could keep your eye out. So, you know, you are going at Thanksgiving to visit your relatives. Um, you're gonna be able to at least walk onto a college campus and check it out. If they're not doing sessions in person, look for those self-guided tours. Um, the other thing I would tell you is a lot of schools will even go a little bit more deep and they'll do academic sessions, especially at larger schools uh, or especially at public schools. So you can see we have not only the regular information session, but also sessions within the colleges, right? And so you will find this to be true where a lot of schools are putting information out uh, if their majors are doing sessions, um, you know, for, the, for instance, with the engineering, you could register if you want to, you know, hear a little bit about just that college in general. Um, right now, of course, we're between semesters, so there's nothing there. Um, but in general, that's going to allow you to register and, and get connected. In terms of other key things to be looking for outside of visiting and you know learning more information, uh, one of the things I would tell you is this is where you're going to see a difference between big schools and small schools. Um, with big schools, often you get pictures of an entire staff and you get general email addresses and general phone numbers. When we go to the Agnes Scott page and when you look at schools often that are smaller typically private you're not only going to find individual pictures of a counselor but also their email address the uh, you know counties or states or countries that they read as well as sometimes their home address cell phone number and how you can you know send them an owl if you need to so 
you know, you're going to get um, and, and should be looking at these pages to figure out, can I get in, some, in touch with somebody specifically who reads my area, right? Um, who owns my territory, reads my file. They're going to be a great resource for you all along the way, whether you're a sophomore or a senior, um, they're going to be a great resource. The other thing that I would look for is um, individual, um, more demographic related information, right? So for instance, if you're a first generation student, um, you know, you can click here and learn a little bit more about, you know, other first generation students who have come to Georgia Tech, um, you know, find out more about their stories. Uh, you can, you know, get some really good information. One thing I did want to point out while we're here is, if you're, we need to probably update this now, um, but this is kind of a fun resource that we created. Uh, we should do a COVID one now, but basically if you're going to visit another college, um, you know, this is a bingo card where you're listening and filling in some of these things, right? So how many majors do they have? You know, what are they talking about with some of their buildings? Is it a test optional school? Um, you know, any of these type of questions not only things that you should be listening out for, but you're welcome to borrow this uh, anytime you would like. And these are great questions to ask. If they don't say some of this and you're looking for an opportunity to ask questions and engage with somebody in an admission staff, then use these questions. Um, I think they're, they're a helpful place to start. Uh, one thing that I wanted to also point out is, um, blogs and uh, you know Bob you mentioned ours earlier but a lot of schools do have blogs uh, and sometimes they're written by students sometimes they're written by various people around campus um, you know especially when and they will sometimes involve alumni as well so any of these types of um, blogs and insight are either going to be specific to that school or broadly you know kind of general for college admission you know, we've started to, in addition to our blog, also, um, you know, incorporate like a podcast with this. And so you can, if you don't have time to read a thousand words, then this is a nine minute podcast. Uh, if you don't have time or interest to listen to nine minutes of a podcast, you should rethink a college degree. So that's a little bit about, um, you know, our site, some of the things I would tell you to look for in general and navigating our site just a little bit. But one kind of wonky thing that I wanted to mention uh, that I find interesting and as I've talked to parents, especially uh, they do as well, is something called the common data set. And you can just Google for this, which is, you know, what I did to get here. So I just Googled Georgia Tech common data set. And, you know, this is one of those things where you might start to say, okay, um, you know, what's important to me and what am I seeing at this college campus? So common data set is because it is laid out the same way for every school in the country. And most schools report this because, you know, rankings use this data um, as well as, you know, a variety of various publications. But you know, let's say that you're a Hispanic student and you're looking to come to a particular college. Um, you know that you can always go to the, the B section uh, and find out, okay, well, how many Hispanic Latino students are there on this college campus? And then what percentage is that of the total, right? So um, this gives you just a sense of, of what that looks like. Um, the other thing that I find really helpful about the common data set is if you uh, scroll down a little bit you get into things like, um, you know, learning a little bit about four-year degrees and, you know, how many people are finishing in four years, how many people are finishing in six years, um, because that's a great question to be kind of thinking about and asking, too, is, all right, well, you know, here's your rates. Now, why are students not? Is that because they're running out of money? Is that because um, you know, the major isn't working out for them, you know, ask hard questions. Don't just ask big questions, but ask hard questions of admission folks. Ask hard questions of professors or tour guides um, as, you're, as you're going through this process. 
So the common data set, you know, I think is, a, is another one that's not as commonly used as it should be by prospective students, mainly because colleges don't really advertise that it's out there a whole lot, uh, but I think it's worth, worth doing. I wanted to go over to the Agnes Scott page real quick and just show you, first of all, how unlike the common data set, websites, of course, are not all commonly laid out, which is, again, kind of our bad, your problem, uh, because you then have to go figure out the next page. Um, and it's not going to be the same. We can't all agree. We think they should all do it like Georgia Tech, but they have yet to agree to that. Um, so real quick, I'm going to go back to, um, let's just go to the start, right? So I want to find admission for Agnes Scott. Uh, it's going to be pretty easy. It's the first thing that pulls up. So this is their main homepage. Um, you know, again, as I mentioned earlier, this is going to link to YouTube. So um, YouTube videos, a lot of schools are putting way more content out there now. They talk probably a little more in the language that they should, right? Instead of first year, they say high school student. So again, that's a great uh, juxtaposition there um, and sort of a typical dichotomy that you'll see is that some schools will use that vernacular and then some schools will talk about freshmen or first year students. But I'm a high school student. This is clearly for me. Let me go see what's happening uh, at Agnes Scott. So again, they're going to take you right to that key information um, about scheduling a visit, requesting more information. So we've already done schedule a visit. Let's look at this. Um, this is again like, okay, you know, Agnes Scott matches up with my why. Agnes Scott matches up with the kind of people I want to be around. Agnes Scott matches up with, I'm good with being in a city, but I'm not so good with being at a big school in a big city. Agnes Scott works for me. And so I want to get on their radar. I want to, um, you know, tell them a little bit about myself and start to hear more from them. So filling that out is good. You can always unsubscribe. You can always just recycle the stuff they send you. No big deal. Um, no harm, no foul in doing that. My son went to Agnes Scott sports camp and he always, when we go by Agnes Scott, says that's his college. Um, I haven't really broke it to him yet. This is a all women's college, uh, but I'm just letting him live that dream. So that would be one place that I would definitely go. Um, the other thing that I noticed that Agnes Scott has um, which is really great is, is something where you can actually personalize a view book. Um, and, and a number of schools have this. They're usually, it doesn't matter to you, but they're outsourced to a company who, who does this. But you're like, all right, you know, I want to study anthropology. Uh, so I'm going to check off on that. Um, I, that's the only thing I want to study. So I'm going to move on. But if you wanted to do multiple majors, you could add them. Uh, you know, I'm really interested in intramural sports. Um, but I'm also really interested in, you know, leadership uh, and also, you know, this city, right? Um, and then I'm going to move on. Now, I'm not going to do this. I usually register my dog or my daughter, uh, but so today I'm not putting that information in. But my dog and my daughter get a lot of campus mail. Uh, so anyway, you know, you put that in, you hit view now in this custom view book. Uh, brings that up, right? So it's a way to synthesize website information. The other thing I would say is you could go to their website. Um, and if you wanted to find other schools that do that, um, it's certainly, you know, something to consider. I feel like that's a really good resource and tool that a lot of schools um, are using right now. The other one actually like that, if you just wanted to like tour some different schools, is you visit. Um, man, it's always scary to be sharing your screen and have like whatever's going to come up, you know, populate, who knows. I would have just blamed it on my wife probably for searching crazy stuff. Um, anyway, so you visit, um, you know, is like all these different colleges and universities. And what I would tell you is if you are a, um, you know, a sophomore right now or a junior right now, um, there is no reason why you shouldn't just come to this site and go on two virtual visits a week, um, you know, because it's free and there's no harm in doing that. If you can match up with some of these schools, then come to the UVisit site. They're a really good um, resource for you. Um, the reason I'm having trouble navigating their site is not because of their site, it's because 
have I have you guys over here and some kind of survey popping up. So I can't really do this as well, but let me, trust me, as I say, um, it's easy to use this site. Um, here you go, 600 different virtual tours. There you go, college search. Um, here's a bunch of different schools, right? Um, and just a good way to take a minute, minute and a half, watch the first little bit um, of some of these schools and just, one of the beauties I think of kind of American higher ed is we do have so many different options. Um, and so taking advantage of that um, is, is great. I'm already getting, you know, somebody tell me how I need to look at American University in Cairo. Uh, Rick, uh, yes, sir. Quick, a quick question. Yeah. Uh, could you take about five minutes and show us on the Georgia Tech site where you'd suggest a student look, A, on the academic section, All right. and B, on the student life section. Okay, sure. So here you go. Um, again, from our main page, this is, this is our homepage. Uh, so you've got kind of what we think anyway, based on some of the analytics that we've seen, are the key things that students are looking for. So academics, here's our majors and minors. Uh, and let's see, hopefully that'll pull up. Otherwise they shut all these down yesterday and didn't tell me, and I'm just working for a school that no longer exists, but who knows. So I'm not sure what's happening there. Let's see if I have any more luck with this. Here is um, information about student life, campus life. Um, you know, probably gonna take me over to either an endless loop or um, most likely, you know, finding out more about what's happening around Georgia Tech. So am I just like in a cycle here? Um, yeah, so like you wanna find out about various organizations, um, you know, what's happening from an athletic standpoint, this gets you into housing, um, including, you know, some of our virtual tours for housing and that kind of thing. Um, a lot of these types of stuff, you know, are of interest to the family. So learning more about what are my, what are my dining options if I were to come there and, you know, what are some of the things that we have available to students? Um, the other thing I would tell you is if you see stuff like this and you want more information that's not like as polished, um, you sh it's a great place to start, but then you're like, all right, let me go look at dining and Georgia Tech on Reddit. You know, dining in Georgia Tech or dining and housing on YouTube and see what kind of stuff pops up, right? Um, and then you've got the varnished, what we want you to see in here side. And then you've got the, you know, they don't have enough vegan options side as well. Um, here's academics. So, um, you know, majors and degrees. Here's all of our bachelor's programs. Uh, so, you know, that's going to break down. We have six different um, uh, colleges. These are our undergraduate programs, minors within that, right? So it, it helps you to understand, like, some of the concentration areas uh, that students might look into, um, you know, and just, just gives you a sense of this. I will say this. There's another school in our state. It's a, a big flagship university. And I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's, it's in Athens, Georgia. And I understand they're not going to be playing football this year. Uh, anyway, they have a really good uh, page for um, majors. Let me see if I can go here. Um, sometimes they block stuff from Georgia Tech. So, you know, you never know if you can actually access their site or not. Um, if I've offended anyone, by the way, I just want you to know, I don't apologize. Um, real quick, like, so with their majors, this is pretty interesting because you can put in random stuff here. So you can put in, uh, oh gosh, like, um, I don't know. And this will tell you theoretically, like what are some of the majors that might be associated with baking? Uh, I mean, I've never done this before, so this is always a little, little dicey. And of course, if it doesn't work, that's because it's UVA's page. 
Um, but I've seen them, there we go. So um, there are no programs matching my search. However, they may want me to look at, you know, dietetics, which you could, you could argue is, is correlated. Um, but it is, I think actually normally, we'll just do something a little bit more conventional. Um, all right, so biology, and then they're gonna give you all kinds of information, like stuff that you might not think about otherwise um, on, this, on this page. So, you know, I do think that to your point, wherever you go, whichever school site you go to, looking for those majors and minors um, is, is a great place to start. Great, I'm gonna pull back the screen share real quick. All right. Uh, and uh, here we go. And I'm gonna um, show two other things and then we'll tackle any questions that haven't uh, been answered. All right. So um, uh, many of our students apply to the University of Texas at Austin and they have a spectacular site for majors yeah. that includes school uh, resources for the student to assess their own strength to explore degrees and to even get a sense of case studies for students in that area. Um, we encourage students who are um, not applying to the University of Texas to use this resource much like the UGA resource. And then the last comment I would make, and I think many students do this naturally, is to make sure you take notes. Um, with our students, we utilize a college research worksheet it was typical when students were able to tour college campuses for them to use a notebook or on their notes app on their phone, to keep track of all their reactions. Now that they're able to do a little more research online, when they spend time on a school's website, we find it really helpful for them to keep notes so that they can have conversations with their parents or counselors about around what is it that they enjoyed and what they learned about that school and how it fits to their criteria. Now, I think we've tackled most of the questions as they've come up, but before we wrap up this evening, I wanted to give um, uh, folks on the webinar a minute or two to ask any questions that Rick or I haven't been able to tackle during this webinar. You know, one other thing, Bob, um, that I didn't talk about though, that, that is helpful is um, something called a net price calculator. So thinking a little bit about um, financial aid, which a lot of schools, I mean, we didn't point that out, but you know, on, on our site, for instance, it's called Afford. Um, but you can just Google for net price calculator uh, for any school around, and it's gonna allow you to put in some, it's, it's like anything with data, right? The better information you put in, the better information that's going to come out. Um, but if you'll put in some some good financial information about you know salary and um, assets and things like that, it'll actually compare, you know, from the last couple of years, people that were in a similar socioeconomic um, situation, and then help you understand what the likelihood is of cost. Um, and this was something that was implemented, you know, under the Obama administration, and it basically requires that um, within, I think it's three clicks, you should be able to get to, from, from a university homepage, a net price calculator. Um, that can be a really valuable resource, like the common data set, um, as far as I'm concerned. Two questions, Rick, have come in. A uh, student asking, uh, what do you think is a good way for them to assess the merits of an academic department or major when the information is really lacking? How would you suggest that they get a better sense of that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that a um, couple thoughts. One is, what is it you want to do with that degree, right? So, um, you know, I want to go study English. Uh, but the reason I want to go study English is because I want to use that English degree in order to do this, right? I want to be an English professor, very different than I want to be a lawyer or, you know, whatever, travel journalist. Uh, so with that said, what I would be doing is I would be asking the English department uh, to tell me about current students or alumni who are doing that, you know, 
Um, if the information is not there clearly on the website, then they should be asking them to provide that information. Uh, also, and a good way to ask this too for a lot of majors is, in this major, who are some of the key companies that hire right, out of your university for that major? And that's a great question to be asking as well, because it gives you a sense, again, of, of return, of outcomes. And as you were saying at the top, this idea of merging career with admission, this idea of outcomes and how that's become so much more important, I would argue since the last recession, you know, 2009, 2010, when schools started to do that, we at Georgia Tech actually merged our offices. So career placement and admission are in the same building. And the idea being, you know, that um, we want to show it starts, you know, as you enter and here's where it ends up with kids wearing like black suits and white socks and needing to figure out how to interview. So, One last question, Rick, and, and I know your time is super valuable. We do have a student who's commented that they're always a little anxious about privacy and anonymity online. Are there any parts of a college's website that specifically track interest or engagement? And how would you suggest they be aware of that? So unless you're giving your information, then no, right? So, I mean, um, we're not tracking IP addresses and, you know, putting a drone over your house or anything like that. Uh, basically, you know, this is why I say social media for good. You don't have to subscribe to that YouTube channel. You don't have to follow that account. Just go loiter. Just go, you know, appropriately loiter. Uh, and I think, again, this is, this is a resource for you, and it's a great look into the culture. Uh, so unless you're entering information, then no. Um, you know, and, and schools are also, you know, especially schools that are re receiving federal aid under pretty severe um, kind of list hygiene. So if you unsubscribe, you know, if you do give your information and you're out, um, you know, we are audited. Uh, often by, you know, in terms of what we're doing with our lists. So I would say, in general, you don't need to be overly concerned, certainly, uh, with just being on these sites. If you give up your information, um, then you can always unsubscribe, as I, was, as I was saying earlier. Great. Well, Rick, we so appreciate your time this evening showing off both the Georgia Tech site and the Agnes Scott site. We certainly appreciate all the attendees of the webinar. We'll be sharing as a follow-up a recording of the webinar, as well as the resources that were mentioned on the webinar. And as students, the three suggestions that I think Rick and I would both suggest is know what you're looking for, dive deep into looking for answers on the website. But I think most importantly, as Rick said, reach out to the school. Don't hesitate to email, to pick up the phone. You need to hear the answers as a student, no matter what your parents, your counselors, your friends say. There's nothing more valuable than talking to a school or a potential alumni directly. So thanks everybody, have a great evening. And again, thanks so much, Rick. Thank you, appreciate it.